This video is a guided tour of the Hewlhauser Archives in Orange, California. I got to visit the Hewlhauser Archives and got a tour from John, who is the archives technician there. And if you don't know who Hewlhauser is, you're in for a treat. And if you do, that's probably why you're watching this video. But it's a really fun tour. I really enjoyed visiting the, the museum and uh, I think you'll enjoy this walk around too. I've always been a fan of Hill Hauser, grew up in California in Orange County and he was always on TV. Uh, I even got his milk bottle for a birthday gift a couple years ago. Love this thing. So uh, it really was a treat to go visit the uh, archives and experience all this and learn a lot about Hill Hauser that I just didn't know about. So I hope you enjoy it and I also wanted to let you know that the, the tour that you're about to see pairs with a podcast interview that I did with John just right before. So he mentioned some things that we discussed in the podcast right before. So uh, we had about almost a two hour conversation about Hill Hauser and the archives and California's gold and all that stuff. So. Uh, I encourage you to go check that out if you're into Hewell Hauser. I think you'd enjoy that too. Um, the link to check it out is up here. It's also in the description or you can just go to curiosityness.com and you'll be able to find the Hewell Hauser episode. I believe it'll be episode 78. But that's it. Just wanted to introduce this and let you know what was going on. And here is the tour of the Hewell Hauser archives. Well, actually, you know what? We should start outside first. Okay. So. <clears throat> Most people um, will see a couple of things related to Hugh Hauser when they first walk in here. So they'll see this picture, right? Um, which is the famous, uh, you know, picture in, written from behind the California poppies. Um, so a little fun fact about this story is this picture is that um, his third cameraman, Cameron Tucker, actually took this picture. Oh, okay. And so um, I can't verify this, but a lot of, uh, you know, I've heard from uh, multiple sources that uh, Hugh and Cameron actually didn't get along. Really? Yeah. And so... Um, so yeah, so uh, Cameron actually got mad at us that we were using his picture because he actually owned copyrights of this picture. And so we were actually eventually able to come to an agreement with him, like, uh, you know, like a licensing fee and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But yeah, he actually found out that we used this picture of his. We actually didn't know it was his picture at the time, I think. Right, yeah. So we were just like, yeah, it's this big, cool picture of Hugh Hauser. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it was actually Cameron Tucker's picture. Okay, man. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, but they actually, they actually didn't get along that well. Man, interesting. Because how long were they together for? Do you know? They worked together for like eight years, okay. nine years. Wow. So like, I'm like, wow, how can you work together with a guy you don't like that much? Right. That yeah. Long, you know. <laughs> but they were they were uh, cordially professional. Okay. So or professional cordially or whatever. Yeah. Um. You know. So, but they didn't like weren't they weren't friends. They were friends. You know, yeah. friendly and stuff like that. But like when it came to just working on the show, they were professional about it and they did their job. Mm -hmm. But you know, after that, at the end of the day, they kind of said they were done. Okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, so there's this stuff. So most people will come down the stairwell. And so the first thing people actually see, if you actually look to your left, is actually this stuff right here. Yeah. So this is part of Hill Hauser's Found Art Collection. This is uh, some of the furniture that I talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so, so all these little rusty pieces here, these are all pieces he found, and then he later put the glass tables on them. Okay, right. And so, or the glass you know, surfaces on them. But these are all uh, spread around Hillhauser's uh, various homes. Mm -hmm. So his Palm Springs home, his um, Los Angeles apartment, uh, you know, uh, 29 Palms. Yeah. It was kind of like all over the place. Right. I believe most of these pieces in particular were in his uh, LA apartment. Oh, okay. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. So this is cool stuff. I love this kind of style stuff. I like making this these kind of yeah, things. Yeah. So too. and you know, most of this stuff is you know essentially junk because like it's all like broken and rusted. You know, the little weird gauge thing over there has broken glass inside it. Yeah. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. So it's like a lot of uh, pretty you know uh, discarded, trashy stuff. You know. Yeah. Right. Totally. But yeah, so people will see this, and we have this little label here that describes his found art collection. Nice. So good. this is a pretty cool thing. And then over here. Um, also along these walls here, not everything decorating the walls uh, down this hallway is part of Hugh Hauser's collection. A mm -hmm. lot of the regular painting looking uh, pieces are just regular paintings right. that we decorated the halls with. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff in the plexiglass containers, that's part of his found art collection. Okay, wow, he had a big collection of stuff. Yeah, so all this stuff, we're also decorating his homes and mm -hmm. you know his uh, backyard and stuff. Right. I was told that in the backyard of his Palm Springs home, he just had stuff laying all over the grass yeah. and stuff like that, <laughs> kind of like a hoarder and stuff. Yeah, right. But um, but yeah, so yeah, so that's stuff part of his found art collection, and then over here as well in this uh, room, in this elevator room, uh -huh. we have uh, two pieces. <clears throat> 
So we have that weird lamp uh, on the corner there. Oh yeah. So that was, um, I don't think it works anymore, but it used to be a working lamp. Um, but yeah, so that's another found art piece. And then this piece is particularly cool. Um, this is a piece from the old Hollywood land sign. Um, back when he did the Hollywood sign episode. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, so this is actually, so this part piece particularly is one of the lighting tracks for the letter O. And so, so obviously here you can see this is where the light bulbs would go and that's how it light up the letters. Yeah. Right. But yeah, so you can see a get better close up picture here. But yeah, see, so these, it would be like one of these pieces here. Wow. That is so cool. So yeah. And these, these guys carrying it up, carrying the pieces and stuff. But yeah, so. Um, back when I was originally, so this is one of the pieces from when it was Hollywood land, not Hollywood. Right. So, okay. um, so when he did the Hollywood sign episode, uh -huh. um, I, they didn't do this on camera, but you know, he spoke to one of the <clears throat> people they were with, um, and he, he asked if he could take a piece home with him. And, uh -huh. stuff. and so he took this one home with him. Nice. So yeah. Very cool. So, so most of the time, most of the artwork, uh, quote unquote artwork he got is just, you know, Stuff he asked people if he could take. And right. It was like, and people, most of these people were like, oh, it's just garbage. So go ahead. Yeah, you know? go ahead, so, heal, whatever you want. That's yeah. funny. So, yeah, so that's, um, so that's a couple of the items that you could see outside of the exhibit. Nice. So, I usually, when I usually do tours, I usually start out here because a lot of, some people miss this stuff out here. Yeah, right, totally. And I'll, um, want to also mention part of the reason why we don't have labels for most of them is because we don't know what they are and Hill Hauser didn't know what they are. Right. Because, you know, they were just pieces of garbage that he just found and took with him. Yeah. So he actually didn't, he didn't really care what they were. He just thought they looked cool and he would take it home with him. Okay. So, so usually when I do uh, my tours, I start off on this wall here. Yeah. Um, so this yellow wall spanning to that wall over there. This is a uh, shows a timeline of Hill's career uh, or Hill's life, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of it's about his career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we have some of the little tidbits that I spoke about in the interview, um, and we have a slew of pictures that showcases some of the you know moments in Hill's life. So here's you know a, a few pictures of Hill as a baby and kid and you know high schooler and stuff like that. Here's a picture of Hill's family. Uh, this is one of the few pictures we have of his family. Oh, okay. So, and then there's his parents, uh, a few, you know, I think this is uh, from the 70s. Harold and Jewel. Yeah. Jewel. And so, oh, so here's a, here's a picture of one of the moments I talked about in his Tennessee days. This is that pig story that he did. Nice, yes. And so, so yeah, and so here's a young Hill Hauser, uh, you know, interviewing yeah. uh, this family. Looking very 70s. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so this is a timeline of his career. A lot of the points I talked about is kind of gets mentioned here. Yeah. Um, and so this, because this is kind of like the highlights and the things we really know about Huell Hauser mm -hmm. and like the most important parts of his career and stuff. What changed him? What led him to become, you know, the the guy we know and love today? Right. And so yeah, so it uh, so it goes all the way up until you know his birth, all the way to 2012, which was when his last episodes aired. Right. Okay. So, so we don't put his uh you know date of death just because we, we don't really want to do that. I don't mm -hmm. know why. So it's just, uh, you know, just we don't want to make it sad, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, right. So people usually, so one of the questions people usually ask me is, you know, what, when did he die? So, yeah. So, oh, so I, I should have mentioned this in our interview, but when we have visitors come here, we get three questions. Like there's, there's probably three questions that get asked the most out of any questions. It is the first one is what did he die of? Uh -huh. When did he die? Um, and, uh, what is it? Was he gay? <laughs> those oh, okay. are, those are the three questions right, and stuff yeah. that, that we get usually of, uh, Hugh Hauser. Um, or what, I, no, actually usually the, the, it, was he gay question is usually preceded by, was he married or had children? Right. Okay. And then I tell him like, no, he never married or had children. And then right. people, you could say, kind of see it on people's faces. They're like, oh, like maybe he was gay, you know? Yeah. And, and then I tell him like, he was gay. Like, right, that's yeah. what he was. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So those are like the three questions we usually get from people. Right. Um, for some reason, that's like the dying question they're, you know, they're having about Hugh Hauser. Right. Yeah. Well, he was so private. Like he, it seems like he would be such a family man, you know, but he sure. Just, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, a lot of people have always, uh, you know, told me, it's like, yeah, he's like, he's a handsome dude and like, he's tall and like, you know, he's this famous TV show host, mm -hmm. but he never married, had children. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, wow, like he must've really loved his work. I was like, well, he was also gay too. So it was like, right, yeah. it's just, it's just another aspect of his persona, you know, or yeah. character and stuff. But yeah, so that's when his, uh, so his last episode aired in 2012 around September, October, I believe it was uh, the uh, the Musicians Institute episode where he does the music video. 
Right. Yeah, we saw that. Um, and so when he uh, when that episode aired, that was his last episode, and then he retired for about two months, and then he passed away. So wow. he was only retired like he was only retired like November, December, and then he passed away January two thousand thirteen. Yeah, crazy. So, so yeah, so he 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 like almost worked the entire his entire life. Yeah, you know, up until his uh, you know dying breath. Man, oh man. So yeah. So um, also decorating the timeline, we have like quotes and stuff, and you know that he said and everything, and little uh, tidbits and stuff and facts. Um, uh, what is it? Yeah. So. Um, oh, my mistake. I think I said, I think in the interview I said 5,000 programs or 5,000 documented instances. I meant to say 1,500. <laughs> yeah. It's I always right. forget the numbers. It's close. So, but anyways, um, yeah, what is it? I think I was mixing up two numbers because we have 5,000, we have 5,000 tapes uh, in the archive. Oh, okay. I see. So I think I might have been mixing up those two numbers. No, that's all right. Um, and then, um, and then the two pillars here in this, the room. Yes. These are not. Uh, these aren't structural pillars, so they actually aren't holding up anything. Right. But they're just decorative, and you know we use that for more surface area. Mm -hmm. And so on uh, the right pillar, we have uh, we showcase some of the characters he's interviewed. Right. Some of the people, you know, um, uh, what is it that he's, you know, showcased on his episodes. Mm -hmm. And then the left uh, pillar is um, all the not all, but some of the locations he's done. Okay. Or he's visited. So, right, yeah. you know, a good number, you know, of these episodes people have probably seen and stuff. And then, oh, I forgot to mention the floor we're standing on. Oh, so, yeah, right. So usually uh, the first thing people notice when they walk here is the floor. So, yeah. Um, so the floor here is obviously a map of California. All the labeled locations are places he did episodes on. Wow. Um, and you can see that in the Southern California area, he did a lot it's of stuff. The majority, yeah. Um, so there's only actually there's actually only one location he didn't do an episode on, and that's Chapman University. <laughs> but we decided to put our location anyway, just as a point of reference. So here we are. Right. But uh, but yeah. So these are all the different places he's visited. Nice. Um, the uh, I would point out that uh, some of the labels are in gray and white and dark gray and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just for legibility. Okay. That's just so it'd be easy to read because down here kind of gets a little. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so so yeah. Um, this corner over here is. Um, I actually like this corner in particular just because this is um this is where we talk about his uh how he, you know how he worked and behind the scenes and stuff like that because right. the timeline I've kind of you know I've kind of talked about that all the time but this one I like in particular because this is the part where I could actually talk a little bit about the stuff that I learned just working here because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff that we don't there's there's been some stuff that we don't mention here only because we learned about it like kind of after the fact right so but yeah so this talk this talks about uh, the work behind and in front of the camera so behind the camera is obviously you know how he worked you know with his cameraman his editing notes and stuff so this right here is actually uh, a small image of uh, his one of his editing notes. Okay. So this is his actual writing, and so you can see here on the left side his timestamps of the of the tape he's watching, and Man. then on the right side are all the little descriptions of what he's seeing at that timestamp. Wow. That and is so great. he did this for every, you know, for every tape basically. Right. Um, what's What's funny about this is that Teal Hauser is actually particular about his note writing paper. Mm -hmm. So he actually really liked the color yellow, uh, as you can tell. Right. Yeah. But uh, he liked the yellow notepads, and so uh, he would always write his editing notes on those yellow notepads. So if someone if someone gave him like a yellow like a, a notepad in a different color, like a white paper, like white paper, yeah, he would throw it away and tell tell that person to get the right color. <laughs> To the right yellow notepad and stuff like that. Okay, wow. So yeah, so he was very particular. Yeah. Like it's literally every production file we have, it's this paper. <laughs> Man, okay. So he was very particular about this. He knew what he liked. But then you know we talk about his uh, his editing schedule, his notes, uh, the cameraman he worked with. Here, right here is cool. This is an example of the program of the calendar I mentioned, or not a calendar I mentioned, but this is a calendar of. Uh, Detailing some of the details of uh, him being a programming director. Okay. So, so you can see here that uh, there's various uh, pieces of writing in different color. Yeah. Each color represents a different county or city. Uh huh. And so we got black for Los Angeles, uh, orange for Sacramento, red for Fresno, uh, green for Inland Empire, and black, uh, no, blue for San Diego. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So you can see here each one is a different like episode. Yeah. And it's like different colors and stuff. 
And Damn. so some episodes would air nightly and some episodes would air, or in some cities, episodes would air nightly and other episodes, it would just air like every few times or something like that. Right, like Sunday and Thursday. Yeah. So, so do you, yeah. Do you know if he did that? No, that's probably someone else. Oh, okay. So this was, this would actually be held up in, um, in uh, Ryan Morse's office. So I imagine that some of this is his writing. Oh, okay. Uh, but Teal Hauser would actually would actually go in uh, go in his office and check the calendar and stuff like that. Right. But yeah. Then uh, then this side this side right here we talk a little bit about uh, the the how they decided on subjects and stuff. Right here is a little instance of the publicity shots that I talked about. Yeah. So this here's a here's a what is it a headshot contact sheet. Or, or I guess just a contact sheet. And you can see here that Hauser X'd out this one. For whatever reason, he didn't like this image. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it looks like here, this is the one that he wanted to he use. He liked that one there. Yeah. Um, okay. And right here is a cool piece. Um, this is one of the original cameras they used for the show. Nice. Um, so, And here's uh, the handheld microphone and everything. Massive, man. It's huge. Yeah, super huge. Like way, way more different than it is now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, so that just gives a little bit of a, you know, uh, details about his office life. Cool. And so, and so over here we have um, we have a, a recreation of Hulhauser's office as it was in KCET yeah. in Los Angeles. And so these are cool pieces because these are all the original pieces of furniture he actually owned and used while he was alive. Wow. So these are the chairs he sat on. These are the tables he worked off of. That little monitor right there, that's actually the monitor that he would watch all his uh, raw footage tapes on uh -huh. and take his editing notes on. That so, so that's cool. why we have the little yellow legal pad right there. So yeah. yeah, he would uh, do all of that right in this little space. Man. Then along with, uh, with that little monitor, we also have the rack of folders to the left of it. Mm -hmm. Those rack of folders, um, those aren't the actual original folders. We have the folders in our in the archive. Yeah, um, that's just like you know, to as a representation of it. I get you. But those folders are supposed to represent the episodes Hauser still was working on before he passed away. Oh. So even before he uh, he died, he was actually working on the show and thinking of different subjects of episodes. Wow. Now I can't say uh, I can't tell if like he was been working on these episodes since the beginning, or if these were just episodes he had on file that he was thinking about. You know, before he died or something like that. Right. Okay. But uh, these are all episodes that he had on file that he was thinking about doing uh, stuff on. Yeah. Uh, shows okay. on. But yeah, Man, as cool. you can see here, he also has a small collection of artifacts and his found art pieces and stuff like that. Yep. Um, oh, piece I really like is actually the one on the right there. So that piece right there is actually just a piece of shust, uh, rusted sheet metal. Okay. So that's just right. That's just rust and green paint. But from a distance, it almost looks like a Jackson Pollock or like a like a like a map of some kind or something. Yeah, right. But it's just it's just rust and green paint. That's so, cool. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, this is awesome. So they this like that was the chair he would use and stuff. Yeah, that's the chair he would use. Wow, not doesn't look too comfortable. Or anything. Yeah, yeah. I've actually sat on it just to try it out, and like it's not too comfortable. Something it's okay, bad. but it's not too bad. Right. Okay. But uh, but yeah. Um, and then here we have a small display of some of the Hauser's favorite mementos. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these uh, <clears throat> refer to specific episodes and moments in his career. Mm -hmm. And other, other items are just random things he collected right. um, and kept in his home. So, so just to you know, list off a few things. Uh, yeah. You mentioned you went visit Bro Gears Dairy. Yeah, so, I have that bottle. You have the belt model? Yeah, I got it as a gift. That's, that's a good gift, yeah. Because that's rare now. Because yeah. it, was, it was limited, you know, uh, print only. So right. it was like the, the year that they, that he did that episode. They, That's so they cool. They published it. Yeah. So, so they have the milk bottle. That's from the Fossilman's ice cream episode. If you've seen the Golden Gate Bridge episode, this right here is one of the rivets from the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. Uh, a lot of people usually ask us what's up with the dog uh, picture. So that dog is actually, uh, is actually a picture of the Marine Corps mascot. Uh, Lieutenant Chesty Puller. Okay. So, um, so they actually they actually have a, a little bulldog as their mascot, mm -hmm. and so Hugh Hauser. I imagine Hugh Hauser had a picture of the dog just because he served in the Marine Corps Reserves. Right. So, but uh, but yeah. So yeah, look at all this stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's so some of these items here. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you've seen the El Camino Real bells episode, um, he has a little uh, replica of one of the bells. Nice. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite things in the in the display is this right here. So 
So Heel Hauser, as you probably know, uh, Heel Hauser was actually made fun of a couple times on the Simpsons cartoon show. Yeah. The first show was, um, I forget when it aired, but it was, um, it was, uh, what is it? Uh, they made fun of Hugh Hauser's character, uh, his persona and stuff. Right. So the the whole episode was this character named Hal Huser <laughs> visits right, the yeah. city of Springfield, and basically he gets made fun of and like he leaves angry and he doesn't like the city and stuff like that. That's yeah. basically the whole joke of the episode. Right. But uh, Hugh Hauser actually, you know, I don't think he saw the episode, but he heard about it. Like people contact him and they're like, "Hey, Simpsons made fun of you." Yeah. And so so he actually contacted Matt Droning, the creator of The Simpsons, and actually told him like, "Hey, you know, like." You know, um, if you're going to make fun of me, I might as well get paid for it. I can, <laughs> I can just do my own voice and stuff, you know? Kind right, of yeah. Or, you know, I could do it for free or whatever it was. Yeah. Because uh, they had an impersonator do, you know, make fun of Hugh Hauser and stuff like that, parody mm-hmm. him. But, you know, Hugh Hauser offered to do his own voice, you know, as his own character and stuff like that. Yeah. So they actually created a second episode featuring the actual Hugh Hauser doing his own voice right. um, for the episode. So it wasn't Hal Hauser, it was Hugh Hauser on the show. So yeah. that was really cool. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't the entire episode wasn't about him. Mm-hmm. He only had, I think, maybe five six minutes of uh, screen time on the episode. Right. So, but it was still really That's cool good, though, yeah. that he was on there. That's so awesome. these right here are scripts from the episode he was featured on. Ah, uh, so and cool. And so they're autographed by Matt Groening and by staff and you know cast of the show and stuff like that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Matt Groening was such a fan of him, huh? Yeah, Matt Groening loved Hugh Lazar. He yeah. Was, he was. Uh, yeah, he loved his show and stuff. But yeah, so other you know so other things here. We have uh, this little bobblehead from the Flea Sandwich Shop in LA. Yeah, that's where we had our first date. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool, that's a cool shop. Yeah. So or uh, restaurant. So um, yeah, so he did the the bobblehead, or you know, he got a bobblehead as a gift and everything. Um, he did an episode about Cease Candy. So here's a little Cease Candy's figurine. Nice. So yeah, so this uh, display we kind of so this display and then those some of the artifacts on the in the room over here we try and change out every now and then. Okay. But Hillhauser actually didn't give us that much stuff that we could actually continuously rotate material out. Mm-hmm. Most of the cool stuff is already out. Yeah. Uh, then the rest of it is just random awards and plaques that he collected or right. that he received and stuff during his time. I see. So and then other little knickknacky artifact stuff, but some of those aren't really in reference to any show. It's just stuff that he collected. I see. Okay. So, so we decided to put out the stuff that's actually in direct reference of his shows because that's more interesting. Okay. Um, in terms of like a career and exhibit, you know, point of view. Right. And then this is the reading room, and so um, uh, the biggest, the, the coolest draw here is the the book collection. So this is Hillhauser's personal library. This, uh, oh. these are cl- uh, books that Hill Hauser collected. Sometimes acquired by his staff, sometimes given to him by fans of the show. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, if uh, if you pick up a book off the shelf, you might find one where a fan uh, wrote a little message to him nice. and gifted him this, you know, this book and stuff. Right. But uh, almost all of them are books about California or cultures and traditions and stories in California. Almost not almost all of them are nonfiction reference historical histories Mm -hmm. things like that no fiction uh, except for one john steinbeck novel really almost everything is is like non-fictional in some way or form right so and that was like what interested huel yeah so but yeah so that's what all all these books are for very cool so if um so unfortunately they're not in circulation with the rest of the library collection here Mm -hmm. but uh, you can pull them off the shelves and read them here in the exhibit nice cool so that's what these tables are for so these tables are for uh, researchers and students who want to use our space to study or use research, uh, do research on Hill Hauser. Mm-hmm. So I've had you know um, history students doing a California history project and stuff, and they'll use our collection for you know their books and, or for their for their research and stuff like that. Right. Okay. So that's the most we've gotten out of these books. Sometimes people just come in and look at these books, and that's about it. Right. <laughs> but yeah, but it's yeah. a cool resource still because it's almost. Everything is almost about California. Yeah, well, no, that's cool to have his his library here available. That's very cool to see. Yeah, and then uh, also we have other uh, artifacts and found arts, uh, found art pieces decorating the walls and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, this wall in particular uh, just has a few pictures and little tidbits of information about the exhibit or Hill Hauser. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to point out these two things in particular. These are cool. So these are in reference to the. Um, to the uh, the gift that Southern California Edison made to us when they gifted us the the seven or eight episodes that Hill Hauser did for right. Edison employees. Yeah. So Edison gave us which one was it? Uh, oh, so Edison gave us this uh, film reel thing, and so um, that was a cool little commemoration. And then we gifted 
Edison this thing or a copy of this thing. So oh, nice. Okay. So so yeah. So Edison gave us this, and we gave Edison this one. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And then um, and then we have other little you know artifacts and stuff like that. Right. This is the Stanley picture I was talking about. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So this that's this isn't the original cool. picture. We have that in the archive. So but this is just a you know a duplicate of it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so I found this. I found out about this last year, and I actually had no idea that we had this in our, our in our collection. And I was like, "Whoa!" Like he he met Stanley, and they drew a original comic of him I and meeting Stanley. I was like, "That's cool." That is cool. So that's one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Mm -hmm. And then let's see. Oh, I think you wanted to talk about the volcano house. Yes. So, yeah. So the only reason we have pictures of the, of the volcano house is because it's the most unique looking out of all his houses. Mm -hmm. The Palm Springs house and the and similar to the Twenty Nine Palms house, those in terms of architecture architecture style, they just have that you know mid century modern style that's typical of those of the Palm Springs region and everything like that. Right. That's popular in those. The volcano house, on the other hand, was originally made by Harold J. Bisner Jr., an architect. He made it back in 1968. So it's been standing for a long time, yeah. Um, but uh, but it's actually exchanged hands quite a few times over the years. I read somewhere that Lucille Ball even owned it at one point in time. Really? Yeah, but she actually sold it because she thought it was haunted and couldn't live there and stuff like that. So <laughs> okay. so Hill Hauser, uh, you know, uh, bought the house eventually. Nice. Um, but yeah, so uh, the reason it's called the Volcano House is because it's it sits on top of an extinct volcanic cone. Yeah, look at that. And so yeah, so you can Jeez. see here in the hilltop, it's all. Of, that gray volcanic rock right and then um and then yeah uh what is it now in terms of the what is it the inspiration uh bisner bisner said that uh the the structure was actually inspired by the san ono for nuclear powering station uh off the one freeway yeah uh, right down to san diego you know yeah so he said it was he was inspired by that and i imagine because of the dome shape and yeah. everything like that yeah i could kind of see that yeah <laughs> but so this house is out in Newberry Springs, which is a place actually Hillhauser actually did an episode about. And so, um, but uh, that that town, if you don't know where it is, it's uh, it's like 20, 30 miles east of Bar Barso, okay. roughly. So it's uh, this house is actually out like like three, four miles out in the desert. So you way. wouldn't be able to see it from I think the road. You'd have to drive into the desert on like a dirt road to get to it and stuff because right, it's super yeah. secluded. Yeah. So. So, and then uh, the last thing I want to show you guys is uh, the actual archive itself. Oh, wow. We get to see it? Yeah. Oh, sweet. So it's not off limits, but we usually keep it closed just because of the environment. The storage environment is kept at a certain temperature and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And also lighting. Climate so, control. Wow. So you can just kind of enter here in the entrance, but, um, but yeah, uh, what is it? Uh, feel free to, you know, look at some of the stuff here. Um, so these are all the original tapes that Hillhauser filmed for his shows. Mm -hmm. um, they come in two formats, digital beta cam and then the one-inch tape reels. The one-inch tape reels are the big things sticking out of the shelves. Um, oh, everything okay. else is a digital beta cam. Okay. And so uh, Hillhauser gave to us all the raw footage, all the B-rolls, all the edit masters, the air masters, and uh, it, you know, if uh, the outtakes, the outtakes would be cons would be considered part of the raw footage as well. Right. Okay. But that's what like all this footage consists of. Right. And so he gave us all this stuff. And as I said before, all the stuff that we've digitized are all just the episodes that actually aired on TV. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um, now along with this, we actually have um, the uh, the production files are the little tan boxes on the right side there. Yes. And yeah. we have those blue boxes uh, on the further side of the aisle. Um, those are his personal papers and uh, collections, uh, or personal papers and artifacts and stuff. Right. So yeah, so yeah. Hillhauser uh, donated all that stuff to us. Crazy. So how long will most of these tapes last for? So um, I I was not trained in uh, audiovisual uh, materials and stuff like that, so I actually can't speak on like the ag exact uh, you know uh, how long they'll last. Right. But I'm I'm assuming it's probably another. Um, oh, whoops! Did I pull the thing? I'm assuming it's another uh, probably 15, 10 to 15 years or so. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I actually, you can actually watch them now. They still work. Uh -huh. But I imagine just because of like the material, the chemical materials that the film tape reels were made out of, yeah. uh, they'll eventually become unstable. Yeah. But I imagine probably another 10 to 15 years, maybe a little more, mm -hmm. they'll eventually become unwatchable. Wow. Crazy. 
Yeah, so glad you guys are doing this stuff and digitizing it. Yeah, so so we've digitized the episodes, but it's it's sad. I wish I wish we could kind of you know just not follow the contract and digitize just everything. Just do it all, yeah. But uh, you know, legally we can't. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so very cool. And then. <coughs> Oh, let me oh let me uh, let me show you some of the other stuff. Let me pull something out real quick. <coughs> so I'll show you uh, production the production file, so you can actually take pictures and video footage of it. So so Hugh Hauser was not this organized when he gave this stuff to us. We had to do this ourselves. Right. Um, they were kept in folders, but we had to kind of reorganize them and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But basically, <clears throat> uh, Hugh Hauser, for each episode, they would have uh, each episode would have its own file, mm -hmm. and each within the file would be all the research they would conduct for that episode. Right. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I think um, Hugh Hauser wasn't a really big fan of research, so most of the research, quote unquote, research. Is actually just correspondence between Huell Hauser, his staff, and like you know the experts they're talking to, mm -hmm. newspaper clip, uh, clippings, pamphlets, uh, correspondence from people like giving him advice or information and stuff like that. Okay. So they didn't do a whole lot of deep dives into certain subjects and stuff. It was mostly kind of like the planning phases of uh, specific episodes. Okay. So we'll use this as a little bookmark. So just as an example. So here's visiting 504, mm -hmm. and so here's that here's the editing notes that I was talking about earlier. So he w I wasn't kidding when he said um, he uses like the yeah. legal pad. Jeez, look at that. Yeah. So this is all his writing and his timestamps and everything. I have a hard time reading his handwriting sometimes. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> stuff. But it was you know it was his own personal thing. It wasn't supposed to be for consumed by anyone else. It was for him. So, yeah. Man, this is so cool. So yeah, so, so let's see. So here's a piece of correspondence from, let me see someone. This was in 1987. This was from Isabel Wang, it looks like. But yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a person that like, I haven't read the letter yet, but you know, I'm pretty sure this person wrote to, to Hugh Hauser about uh, this specific subject. So yeah. the episode itself is called Chinese Exercises. So I'm assuming she probably contacted him about it. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, here we go. So here's a pretty cool thing. So they probably printed this out just to learn a little bit about it. Some research of it. And then here's some little cards from KCT. Looks like little messages to oh, you. while you were out, yeah. So, and then, oh, newspaper clippings stuff. Yeah, so you could see, so every now and then you could actually see like handwriting by Huell or his staff taking notes of certain bits of information and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's kind of, essentially almost every file is kind of like this. It's yeah. the editing, editing notes, any correspondence they had with people. Um, you know, newspaper clippings or pamphlets and any like supplemental information that gives them just a little bit of detail about the subject they're studying. Yeah. They wouldn't do deep dives into each subject, but you know, this is kind of like the most they would get into something. Yeah. Good an idea of what they were doing. Yeah. Okay. But then beyond that, Hugh Hauser would actually tell his producer to not really fulfill, uh, fill him on any other, you know, information and stuff like that. He kind of wanted to go in blind. He wanted to be surprised and figure it out. Yeah. So yeah, so that's what uh, all the production files contain. So that's so the production files I actually like going through every now and then, just because you get to see a glimpse of like how they planned an episode and you know what kind of information was important to them. Yeah. And stuff. But most of the time, it's kind of the same thing. It's usually just correspondence and pamphlets and stuff like that. Right. Very cool. And then look at this is a Triple A did this. Yeah. So Triple A did this. Uh, so they actually did both of these. Um, this this came out when we first started the exhibit or the archive. Yeah. And then this came out, I think, uh, 2017. Oh, so these are pretty recent. So th yeah, so these are recent. Uh, this this one's an old one, uh -huh. and I think they actually give both of them still. Oh, so okay. They'll give a they'll give or they sell them. They right. either sell them or give them away. But yeah, um, we get them for free just because we're the archive. Nice. But um, but they uh, you know, distribute these at uh, uh, AAA offices. Yeah. So these are maps of California, and they highlight. 
various uh, locations of Hillhauser episodes. Mm-hmm. So if uh, if anyone was interested in doing a you know Hillhauser road trip, R- right? Yeah. They could they could use these maps. Yeah, I could see um, people doing that. So yeah, so so we give them away for free, but you could also get them from AAA as well. Cool. But yeah, and so that kind of essentially is a rundown of the entire. Uh, uh, exhibit yeah so yeah <laughs> no it's great i mean it's it's small but it, it shares everything it's i'm glad you guys are here and showing this stuff and and have a space to to you know show off his his collectibles and stuff yeah, like that sure. you know it's great <laughs> yeah so cool well thanks again john appreciate yeah, no you problem. you know showing us around and everything yeah. well welcome back hope you enjoyed the tour and learned a lot and again if you want to check out the full length podcast episode interview that i did with john um the link will be up here or in the description, or it's on, you could just type it in, it's uh, curiosityness.com, and uh, you'll be able to find it, or listen wherever you get podcasts, just search for Curiosityness. And uh, since you're here, let me tell you a little bit about the podcast. I interview people like this all the time about things or people I'm interested in, like Hugh Hauser. Recently, I also interviewed the DeLorean Motor Company. It's still around, DeLorean, DMC, the guys from Back to the Future. You could check that out up here if you'd like. Uh, but that was an extremely fun episode. By the way, they're making new DeLoreans. So if you want to check that episode out, click up there and uh, take a listen. But I also do other stuff, like I recently converted a old 1984 Macintosh to replace the screen with an iPod, so it's, or an iPad, so it's basically a touchscreen Macintosh. You can check that out again up here if you'd like. Mm, That's all I have to say. It's a pretty fun project and uh, if you're interested in building kind of stuff like that, that's a lot of the stuff that I do here on this channel so I'd encourage you to subscribe. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Enjoying Huel Hauser. Hope you... I just... I love Huel Hauser. It was so fun to go and do this. So uh, just feel so lucky that I get to do this. Thank you for watching. I'm done. Goodbye.